Hello witches, wizards and those who are yet to receive their Hogwarts school letters, welcome to my Harry Potter kitchen. This is the YouTube series where I'm baking my way through the Harry Potter books, making recipes for all of the food and drink we find inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we made four Hogwarts house inspired butters, then make sure you check out the link down below for a little bit of wizardry. And if you're new to the kitchen and you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click on the notification bell, and you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, it is Monday, so let's see what's next. Okay, so let's head back into chapter four at Flourish and Blocks to see what is next. So we're joining the Wheezies again at breakfast and now Percy has come on down to join them too. There is one more owl making his way in, it's Errol and he is carrying a letter from Hermione and she's just arranged to meet everyone at Diagon Alley next Wednesday. Now for the rest of the day, the boys are out practicing Quidditch and I can see our next recipe. They couldn't use real Quidditch balls, which would have been hard to explain if they had escaped and flown away over the village. Instead, they threw apples for each other to catch. An apple a day, keeps the Quidditch balls away. If you fancy recreating your own Quidditch candy apples, then all of the ingredients and the instructions will be on my website, bradleybakes.co.uk. The link is down below in the description. So as the boys are using apples to practice their Quidditch skills, I thought for this week's recipe, we would transform some standard apples into Quidditch balls themselves, and it's gonna require a bit of my Harry Potter kitchen magic. Now, usually I try to practice my recipes a fair few times and then only bring you the final thing, but I actually had a fair few kitchen mishaps through the way with this week's recipe, so I thought it'd be good to show you each of those as it gives you a few good do's and don'ts when you're working with sugar. First up though, we need to prepare our apples and get them onto their skewers. I've got a large cooking or brownie apple for the quaffle, some medium sized Granny Smith apples for the bludgers, and some mini apples for our golden snitch. To begin, you want to wash your apples thoroughly in cold water and then pat them with a kitchen towel until they are completely dry. It's really important that you make sure there is no excess moisture on the apples. Once you're happy that they're nice and washed, you want to remove any stems that are popping out the top. Then take yourself a sharp skewer and then pierce it into the centre of each apple, twisting it round but being careful not to go too deep as you don't want it to come out the other side. As fun as it would have been to serve our candy apples on ones, these are a little bit more delicate so we'll stick to skewers for now. Okay, next up is the coating for our candy apples and this is where things started to get a little bit messy in the kitchen. My first lesson was that you shouldn't cut your apples. As we mentioned while we were cleaning them, no excess moisture and that's because when you dip it into your sugar, the sugar won't be able to set and it will spill everywhere and that's what happened when I carved my quaffle. Shout out to Johnny McGuigan on Instagram. Even though it was a hot mess, he was the only one who was still able to work out that we were turning them into Quidditch candy apples. So well done to you. And if you want to see some more behind the scenes magic, make sure you follow at Brad Bakes on Instagram. That also counts for my second plan, which was to coat it in chocolate. The same rule applies here. Because there is moisture in the apple, those juices will come out and interfere with your chocolate, so you won't be able to dip it and get a nice clean finish as the chocolate will seize up. So it's really important that whatever fruit you're using for this, it has a nice skin that will protect any moisture on the inside from getting to the sugar or chocolate on the outside. So I decided to stick with an all sugar candy apple recipe, and that is kind of what I wanted to go for in the first place, but we'll use decoration at the end to try and get those unique shapes. For the sugar candy apple coating, you want to get yourself a pan and place it on a medium high heat. Add in your sugar, liquid glucose and water, and then bring it up to the boil. Place the sugar thermometer in and you want to keep on heating this until it reaches the soft crack stage. That's at 140 degrees Celsius or 280 degrees Fahrenheit. As soon as it hits temperature, turn off the heat, and then we're gonna start coloring this. You want to work as quickly as possible before it starts to set and add in your lightest color first. That's gonna be yellow for our golden snitches. You want to gently swirl this around until you get a nice even color, but be careful not to overmix it as this will cause sugar crystals to form. 
Take your mini apple and then dip it into your sugar, trying to get the best even coating you can. Remove it from the sugar syrup and then begin twisting it in your hand and you'll notice the syrup start to drip off. You want to keep on rotating so you get a nice even finish until no more is dripping off. You can then place that down on a silicone mat to set. The next darkest colour is our red quaffle, so I'm adding in some red food colouring, mixing that around and then dipping our large cooking apple in. Again, try your best to get a nice even coat and then keep on twirling it until it's even. Once it's stopped dripping, place that down. And last but not least is our dark brown bludger. So for this, we're going to go for a nice deep ready brown by adding in some more black and red. Mix that through until you get a nice even colour and then dip your apples in. Twirl them until they stop dripping and place them down on your mat. So that is our sugar coating done and this is a really important step to get right as we want to have a lovely crisp snap to that outer shell on our candy apple. And this comes with its own problems as we are working with hot sugar. But there are three tips that I want to share with you that I learned along the way. Okay, tip number one is around your ingredients and you want to use liquid glucose or corn syrup. And if you can't get either, then golden syrup is actually one that you can use instead. Now what this will do is help you heat up your sugar without forming too many sugar crystals. So that is gonna be really important as if you get those crystals as it begins to set and cool down, the whole thing will crystallize and you won't get a nice clean finish. Tip number two is no mixing. Now as tempting as it might be, you don't want to get a spoon and start stirring and definitely don't get a whisk as that is also going to encourage sugar crystals to form. If you do need to swirl it around to get a nice even cook or to help that sugar dissolve, then some gentle swirls of the pan is all you should do. And tip number three is about your speed. Be very careful not to heat it up too quickly, but also not too slowly. That's why I always recommend a medium high heat and you want to gradually bring it up to that soft crack status. If you go too fast, again, it's gonna rapidly boil. Too much movement means you're gonna get sugar crystals. Okay, now our candy apples are ready to go. We're gonna move on to the final decorations and this is the step that's really gonna transform them into Quidditch apples. We'll do our bludgers first as they are nice and simple. We're gonna make some silver paint using silver luster dust and some mixing alcohol. Mix it around until you get a nice even color and then I'm gonna paint some swirls and some circle details on top of the candy apples. Place these to one side to dry. For our quaffle, I'm gonna use the same technique to make some gold paint and then I'm gonna use a stencil to mark out some key points and then paint on the Hogwarts crest. I also want to get those contour lines that appear on the side of the quaffle. So for this, I've mixed some black food coloring with mixing alcohol and then painted those circles on. You want to make sure you get a nice sharp outline, but then brush into the middle of your circle to give it some depth. Place these onto your mat to dry as well. And last but by no means least is our magical golden snitch. For this, we're gonna start with some wings. So I've got some white candy melts and place them into a bowl over simmering water until melted. Get yourself a piping bag with a writing tip and then pour the white chocolate in. I've then got myself some baking paper and traced on my wings and then piped the outline before filling in the middle. Allow these to dry completely before painting them with your silver luster. Once the wings are dry, I've taken my candy apple and some gold edible glitter spray and covered the entire thing. Then using a bit more of your melted chocolate, stick your wings on either side. Quidditch practice is in session. And with that, our Harry Potter candy apple Quidditch balls are complete. It took a fair few attempts to get there, but I'm very happy with how these finally turned out. Let me know down below in the comments, which one is your favorite? Will it be the quaffle, the bludgers, or the golden snitch. That's all for this week's recipe, but if you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell, and then you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new recipe. I'm about to go practice myself some Quidditch, and I'll see you next time. This is definitely what I've been seeking.